and we're off. Good morning, I've got Professor Claire Parrish with me today and we're talking about some wonderful research that Claire's been doing in the field of Parkinson's. Good morning, Claire, welcome. Good morning, how are you, Jodette? I'm good, I'm good. Wonderful to have you with us today. Uh, I thought we might start with just a, a brief introduction of who is Claire and what's brought her into the Parkinson's field of research. Um, I'm a, so I'm a neuroscientist. I've been studying Parkinson's disease or neuroscience for about the last 20 years. I did my um, PhD training on my undergrad and my PhD out at Monash University here in Melbourne. And then I went to Sweden for a period of five years where I did some postdoctoral training. So that's our period directly after a PhD, um, specifically to learn about stem cells and stem cell transplantation therapies for Parkinson's disease. And then I came back here um, around about 2007 and I set up a lab of my own. I've been at the Flory Institute of Neuroscience and Mental Health uh, for about the last 13 years. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what sparked your interest in the beginning? Um, I was always, always probably a bit of a nerdy kid. Um, loved science, loved maths, and I followed my interests. So I went to university with no idea what I wanted to do. Um, uh, did a, a Bachelor of Science degree and that stumbled into a PhD. I really enjoyed what I was doing and I still do today. I feel one of those fortunate people that I actually enjoy going to work each day. Oh, that's um, wonderful. The privilege of waking up every morning and, and being able to ask a question um, and, and have tackle that question. No, oh, great. And great we've got such infrastructure here in Australia to allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a bit more about the research that you just announced. Um, so the, I'll, I'll probably put it in context. So my research is mostly looking at cell transplantation for Parkinson's disease. So I'm sure your audience is very familiar with dopamine therapies um, or dopamine drugs that can be used to help with um, the challenges of everyday movement uh, in the disease. One of the challenges of, of these drugs is that they're delivered all through the body by the, by the way that we take these medications. Um, the problem with this is it can have effects on other parts of our body where we don't need the dopamine. Uh, and they, there's some challenge, as we're all aware, various challenges with these drugs over time. We're looking at a very targeted delivery of the dopamine into the area of the brain where it's needed. So we do this by transplanting in new dopamine cells into where they're lost in the brain and looking to recreate just a focal little piece of dopamine circuitry. So it's something that stemmed from uh, clinical trials out of Sweden about 30 years ago, and they showed evidence that this could work. Um, and the field has now been uh, rigorously working over this period of time to make this a uh, more validated and substantiated therapy um, that's both safe and we can improve. There's been a lot of variability in the patients in the past, and it's about trying to standardise this therapy. So the new research we've just published is about how do we make these transplants survive better and how do we make them knit into your brain better? So how do they make better connections with the, the circuitry that's already inside your brain? And we do this by introducing a virus into the brain. Not all viruses are bad at the moment. Um, we use a virus to introduce a protein into the brain and this, brain, uh, this particular protein um, is probably the front runner for promoting the survival and the connectivity of these of these particular dopamine neurons. And we've been able to show that the graphs do survive better, they connect better, and we get better um, restoration of um, movement in the animals that have Parkinson's disease. Right, great. So um, what are the next steps with this research? Where do we take it to from here? Um, it's, it's early days, so there's, there's two parts probably, um, two answers to your question there. The first is there are clinical trials um, recently commenced, one in Japan and another one about to start in the UK and, and also in the US, um, that is looking at using human pluripotent stem cells for transplantation. So this is the first time we've ever used human stem cells in the brain uh, in a clinical setting. These are small scale trials. So we are moving these cells into the clinic. The, the advancement we've made by combining gene therapy and cell transplants is the first time this has ever been done. So we need to do our um, rigorous validation that this is going to be safe. Can we control these viruses? Can we control um, how these graphs grow and really track this over long terms? So we're now 
looking at trying to develop switches so that we can turn these viruses on and off, we can turn the graphs on and off, uh, to make sure that we can control all the parts um, in this process. So we propose here in Melbourne, we'd like to be within a clinical trial within the next five years, but we'll not directly on this gene and cell therapy, but at least a cell therapy um, coming out of Melbourne within that time frame. No, that's fantastic. That, um, very, very interesting. So is there anything else you'd like to tell me about the research going on in Parkinson's that um, people would be, like to hear? Uh, I'm just thinking about something. Um, that's, that's probably my main, main task today. On the spot like that, I'm just thinking what else we have. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. No, I mean, we have many other fun things we do in the lab. I guess another particular favourite project we have at the moment is trying. We know that the graphs are very, um, there's many different cell types in the transplants we put into the brain. Only one of these cell types we need. We have a lot of research running in the background that's about putting a what we call a kill switch or a suicide switch into our cells so that we can remove components of the graft we don't want um, and protect um, other aspects of the graft that we do want. So we can, again, we're very interested in generating tools that will allow us to fine tune things. And even in worst case scenario, if a transplant is not of benefit for a patient, that we can actually switch off a transplant altogether. No, that capacity control sounds really interesting. Yeah. Okay, look, wonderful research. And thank you very much for providing um, what was a really easy to understand uh, overview of it. Um, best yeah. of luck with moving to full clinical trials or whatever it is, the next step, the ones you're hoping to do in another couple of years. And we look forward to um, hearing more about your research and seeing where it goes in the future. Sure. Thank you.